It's Neil Holt from Health 2.0 and the Healthcare Blog, and I'm in the WebMD Wellness Lounge and Studio, live performance, Dean, part of the Digital Health Summit. Uh, right now, I'm with Charles Michael Yim, Shark Tank, and was the, the, the guy who... Whenever the word breathometer is mentioned, our minds quickly race towards what would have been one of the greatest inventions of the 21st century, a tool that would have saved thousands of road users from avoidable accidents caused by alcohol. However, little or no story is said about the man behind the product, Michael Yim. Michael wasn't born in Buckingham Palace, nor heir to one dynasty in China. Rather, he was the son of an immigrant single mom. It wasn't every day that we come across mothers who left their country with as little as $200, all in a bid to find a greener environment for themselves and their families. To restaurants or coffee shops and then writing about those experiences online, telling all your friends about the great places you've been. Jackson Hole, welcome guys. Thanks, John. What is Chatterfly exactly? So Chatterfly is a points-based rewards program for local businesses. So bring it straight to the smartphone, and it's fun and easy. So how do I sign up for that? You simply go to the store, search Chatterfly. You can do it on an iPhone or any Android phone. So both, both uh, platforms. Hit a new spot you've been wanting to check out, or maybe it's just your favorite coffee shop. Either way. It was from this modest beginning that Yim found his way to the streets, selling his lemonade at age three to whoever cared for a life-changing taste. No sooner than his late 20s, Michael had made a name for himself and was no longer the selling lad nor the middle school student who sold items to his classmates, nor was he the young man selling basketball cards at events. He was now known as the young man who founded successful startups and most recently launched another disrupting startup, the Breathometer. I'm the founder and CEO of Breathometer, the world's first breath analysis platform, uh, and, and ultimately it right now is the most non-invasive method to detect biomarkers of the human body, a breathometer, ultimately a breathalyzer, and uh, where I was able to make my initial debut was on Shark Tank. It was in 2012 the breathometer was founded by Michael. Like most entrepreneurs, he sought to solve a problem with his new invention, and what he asked, Yim noted that the smartphone market had no breathalyzer. As if that wasn't enough of a problem, the breathalyzer available for use was both expensive and too difficult for the vast majority of people to use. Of course, we're here with Charles Yim from Breathometer. I gotta say, I gotta say, it's like thermometer with the breath, uh, Breathometer. And of course, you might have seen him on the hit show Shark Tank. Now, you might be wondering how the funds were raised for what could have been a great product. Yes, it was through a crowdsourcing campaign, which was enhanced by Indiegogo. While the initial plan was to raise the sum of twenty-five thousand dollars, due to how innovative the product was. Breathometer recorded over $138,000 in revenue. Closed what was nearly close to a $2 million round uh, for a series seed. Yeah. Do that from what I was told, but uh, you are the first person that's gotten the full series C funding. So, uh, and, and is that where Indiegogo comes in here? We're the first that actually closed all five um, on the show and after the show. And that's the big, that's a big deal. Due to how widespread the product was getting in the market, Michael made his way to the Shark Tanks with the hope of raising the sum of $250,000. We all know that Shark Tank is reputed for turning around dreams into reality. And if that's the case, Michael must have thought, why not give it a try? Next into the tank is a Silicon Valley veteran. With Hello, Sharks. Michael made his way to the Shark Tank in September of 2013, and with the hungry look of the sharks, we could tell they would be eager to pounce on him if he failed to convince them. With that in mind, he knew that he really had to give a top-notch presentation. We're at a local bar with some friends, having some champagne. Yeah, well, I, th I thought you were joking. <laughs> Thank you, Laurie, here Thank you go. You. Thank oh, you. Right. Thank That's you. Damon's favorite drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To you, Charles. Thank you. Sometimes food, you have some drinks, before you know it, the night's over and it's time to go home. Are you safe to drive? The old breathalyzer's around. So that's why I created Breathometer. It's so small, it can fit in your pocket. It can retract the audio jack, plug it into the smartphone. Within a matter of seconds, you'll be able to know what your breath alcohol level is. And better yet, you can, you can even hail a cab with a push of a button. So please join me on this mission to help people make smarter and safer decisions one breath at a time. Thank you. Currently? So we basically launched in March via an Indiegogo campaign, generated $140,000 in revenue. Indiegogo is a crowdfunding. It's just right. like Kickstarter. Right. Correct. Can we see it? Can we see it? Yes. <laughs> I thought one of the biggest issues around... The Sharks must have gathered for blood, but he was a master presenter. With the aid of a glass of champagne, the Sharks abandoned their natural thirst for blood. 
And with that, he demonstrated to them why his innovative product is the next best thing on earth after Kentucky Fried Chicken. And if she doesn't pass. If I can't walk. Hey, if she can walk in those heels, it, you already have your answer. Um, all you need to go do is hit the start button. Okay. Real close in. Yeah, you're legal. Does it tell you if she has bad breath, too? <laughs> well, regardless of how great one's presentation is, the sharks are not that easily moved, and as such, they would want to test the product before deciding for themselves. It seemed as if the sharks decided to nominate Lori for the product testing stage. Lori went and came back with good news. Okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make you an offer. What to do is offer you $500,000 for 20% of the company. I'll give you a chance to talk to other people because I know sharks. you want to. <laughs> Mark Cuban didn't become a billionaire by sleeping on opportunities whenever they presented themselves. So without any hesitation, he jumped onto the deal, wanting to take all the pizza for himself. Whether his colleagues would allow him to enjoy alone is a different topic, but we know that one thing rich guys hate is being left out of a juicy deal. Would you let me go in with you? No. And handle the retail end? <laughs> this is not real. I'm not worried about the retail. I'll give you 250000 for 15 percent okay and not nearly as much cash the whole idea within the next 60 days is to close a full one million dollar round from the angels back in silicon valley i'm more than willing to open up the round potentially involve more than just one shark because i think there's an incredible amount of value here i don't i don't want to work with the other sharks mark's not done talking yet <laughs> all right i'll give you another 250,000 if kevin will have me on that I'll do it. That makes a lot of sense to me. And I'll give you another 250000 No idea what they're investing in. That's not true. It is absolutely true. Mark, I like to surround myself with people much smarter than me. That's why I have a challenge being up here. I want to, uh, I think I want to match what you're offering. 250000 Unlimited manufacturing. Okay. 10%. You wouldn't want to partake in the groups? I've tried to get these three bobos together at breakfast one day, and, and, it's, and it's hard. You know, it's like... Right now, we can't agree. We've got three, maybe one. No, I think one, we could agree, Kevin. But what if we ran... And just like we thought, all the sharks then wanted to taste the pizza for themselves, but Mark wasn't comfortable sharing it with anyone. We know for sure that Mark amassed his fortune by not being cooperative in opportunities like this, and he wouldn't change his nature today. You get the lion's share. What does the lion's share mean? What, what equity do I get? So get <clears throat> wow. Um... What can you give us on a straight equity deal? This is your round right here, right now. Oh, Charles, think. OK. Would you be OK with taking, say, 300, doing 300,000? They split up the 700 amongst them. I'll do, I'll do 500K for 15%. For 15%? Yeah. OK. All five sharks will give you a million dollars. So $1 million for 30%. Um. Do it. Can I have a second to make a phone call to sure. my CFO? Yes, sure. of course. An offer, um, all five of them. And so basically a million dollars uh, for 30% uh, of the company. Not a huge valuation. Sure. I mean, I fundamentally, I'm a little bit worried about too many cooks in the kitchen. You know, can they work together effectively? Who wants to bet what he comes back at? Well, let's see what happens. He's been out there a long time. You have an opportunity to get all five sharks. And from the rest of the sharks, we're going to split it right. for a total of 30% for $1 million. I accept. All right. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good Good very much. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers entire team of the Sharks. I'm ecstatic right now. I have no words. Well, after years of persuasion, Mark finally agreed to team up with the rest of the Sharks. With all the Sharks on board the adventure, Yim agreed to their terms and we can all see the excitement in the room. Now is definitely the best time to finish that bottle of champagne. Are, are you up all time on Shark Tank investments? Nah, not... Am I up, like, up financially? Yeah. Oh no, I've gotten beat. Really? <laughs> A couple. What was yeah. your biggest loss? There was this company that had um, you would blow into it and it did alcohol detection, and it was a great idea yeah. and actually a decent product. Um, I look at his Instagram and he'd be in Bora Bora. What? Two weeks later and he'd be in Vegas partying, you know. Then he'd be on Nectar Island with Richard Branson. What the fuck are you doing? You're supposed to be working. Oh no, I'm networking. Next thing you know, all the money's gone. After sealing the deal with Mark Cuban and other sharks, we would have expected that the product would make waves into the market. 
However, four years later, we get a shocker as it turned out that they made a discovery that the product made false claims of the accuracy of the product. Just like, yeah, so that was my biggest beating. Do you blow up on these guys or you just say fuck there's it? There's no point. Yeah, there's no point. Testing the product. Getting wasted. Yeah, yeah getting wasted it. and making sure it yeah. worked. It's going and around. Yeah, he just, yeah, it was not cool at all. As if that wasn't enough, the product reported inaccurate results. With all the problems of the product, its app was closed and all customers were given full refunds of their money. Mark Cuban was unhappy with the development and thus labeled the company his worst investment ever. That's indeed an unexpected end for the once promising company.